Hello and welcome to this episode of Macro Sutra. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, deputy editor at The Print. And now the word AI, it's become something of a buzzword where everybody's talking about it, everybody's trying to sell you some product that has AI in it, whether it is video editing, creating deep fakes, sound editing, or chat GPT to help you do your homework. There's a lot going on, but AI also has a lot of actual use cases in very serious sectors such as the financial sector. Now what these use cases are, how they're already being applied and what some of the problems that could come up. To discuss all of that, we have with us Radhika Pandey, Associate Professor at NIPFP to take us through all of this. What is AI also? So thank you so much Radhika for joining us. Thank you Sharad. So now Radhika, before we start, I mean, as I mentioned, there are all these various uh, people use AI very loosely, right? but what exactly is AI when we're talking about, say, the financial sector? Yeah, so there are various definitions of AI and because it's an evolving field, there is a lot of uh, conversations around what is the scope of uh, artificial intelligence, what is the form of artificial intelligence. So AI in general, what is generally accepted is a machine-based system right. that takes certain inputs and it processes it and generates output. And that output can be in the form of a prediction, it can be in the form of a recommendation, it can be, uh, you know, a, a new content as you pointed out, mm -hmm. you know, uh, video content. So there could be various uh, forms of output based on the objective which is provided to the input. So, right. you know, so that's the basic uh, uh, definition. So now we have uh, artificial intelligence, which is traditional in nature because it was already in use. We might not know that it's called artificial intelligence, but mm -hmm. uh, in some form or the other, it was in use for, say, a decade or so. Right. But now what is more prominent, becoming more prominent is Gen AI or generative AI, yeah. uh, which is a more advanced form of uh, artificial inter intelligence, where where uh, it's not about just analyzing data and giving you certain analysis or predictions of uh, data, but actually generating new content. Right. So the difference, the key difference between AI and Gen AI is that while AI is used for uh, analysis uh, and for giving certain predictions, uh, Gen AI, based on your data, it can actually create new data or new content so that is uh, uh, generative uh, ai and they have these uh, you know concepts have these technologies have implications in uh, varied fields and one of, of the field is uh, the finance as you rightly mentioned right so now coming to the financial sector at the very top central banks are also starting right. to use ai so right. in 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 what ways are they using it and uh, you know, uh, ha are they already starting or is it still things like pilot projects and... No, for some uh, central bank, they are already using it for uh, many uh, purposes and mm -hmm. those purposes are uh, wide ranging starting from things like, you know, just data analysis. Right. Uh, because, you know, the reason why AI has gained traction is because now we have access to large quantities of data. That was the main limitation why earlier AI did not gain traction, but now it is gaining traction is mainly the, there are two drivers. One is uh, improved computing skills right. and second is availability of data and the low cost of data storage. So now central banks are not only looking at traditional data like GDP, IIP, inflation, right. they are looking at non-traditional data, they are looking at, uh, uh, they are looking at non-traditional data uh, to understand the trends in economy hmm. you know things like you know looking at sentiments it is something very crucial yeah. to uh, generate a sense of uh, whether economy is moving into a recession or whether ec economic growth is robust so sentiments can tell us a lot and sentiment is something that can be uh, you know uh, generated sentiment index can be generated using ai based technologies or even inflationary expectations inflationary expectations so all these things you know new set of data because we have actually access to new set of data, it can help in improving our, uh, improving the central bank's monetary policy mandate and even other things, as I said, sentiments is, you know, if you look at, uh, for example, from Facebook posts or from uh, uh, messages, one can have us interviews, looking at interviews of experts. Mm -hmm. All these things are 
taken together and integrated with traditional data sources to get a sense of what are what is economic sentiment in the right. you know what is the sentiment like in the economy and based on that predictions about gdp etc can be made so because we have access to now non traditional data ai is used to leverage that skill or that data to uh, you know various use cases so one simple example as i said is uh, data analysis and that can be used for monetary policy analysis because then you know we have earlier also even now for example central banks are using regression to mm. predict inflation of course but that's a kind of a basic level basic analysis, level analysis. but now you can actually find out the drivers of inflation you know how much inflation is driven by past expectation how much it is driven by future expectation right. how much is due to goods how much due to services so now a lot of complicated models can be assessed using the uh, can be hard, can be assessed using the technology of ai based solutions okay and so that is one sorry and the last okay. one is that it helps in improving the supervisory capacity of the reserve bank or for uh, for any other central bank because uh, the central banks can detect uh, irregular transactions mm -hmm. anomalous transactions and they can detect they can uh, differentiate that from regular transaction because th that is something that can you know have pro uh, implications for uh, money laundering etc for example reserve bank also has rbi has something called an innovation hub right. it's a subsidiary of um, rbi and they have developed a, a software for uh, uh, identifying what is called a mule account mule mm -hmm. account is something which is uh, opened by one person but is operated by another person yeah. so that is again something that can uh, be used for uh, you know for fraud so if uh, if there is a capacity to detect such kind of mule account then it can help in uh, tackling the problems of uh, money laundering right so basically it's like one it's a gigantic brain right. that is able to process large amounts of, of data, data right and because now there we have access to so much more data right it all of it comes together to make a much more robust system absolutely right so but then ai is also being used in things like uh, getting a more accurate credit score for right. people yeah. because you know you aren't just looking at your income statements and you know your past borrowing activity now I even i've spoken to a lot of companies now that are using uh, ai to look at your social media posts right. your spending patterns all yes. of that so yeah. could so you tell that, us more about those yeah so that's very important and that's a very critical uh, use case of ai uh, for particularly for financial institutions both banks as well as fintechs mm -hmm. so fintechs were uh, uh, using this and now even banks have accelerated the pace of adoption of ai for the purpose of uh, credit scoring now there are two parts to it one it can help in faster customer segmentation and it can help in making faster faster lending decision right. because you are not only looking at as you uh, said you know just the traditional indicators like your past repayment history that can be used to assess credit scores right. you know, what our credit bureaus give us the credit scores but it is looking at other kinds of data facebook posts consumption habits mm -hmm. to get a sense of what is the credit worthiness of that person yeah. so that helps in again generating credit scores and it it is uh, considered to be more robust because you are looking at a larger uh, information set you are not looking at a very minor uh, ma uh, you know limited data but you are looking at a larger information set and the thing is that a lot of this data the traditional data you can actually I mean I wouldn't say fudge it but there are ways to make them look better right. than they actually are but it's very hard for you to change, change your, your entire behavior right absolutely. so your social media activity and all of that will show that you know oh this person like he's posting a lot of very expensive holidays or very expensive cars right. his spending patterns are clearly out of uh whack from what he's reporting his income to be right. those kind of things yeah so those are very uh, important inputs for making uh, credit decisions whether to right. lend or not so it helps in uh, improving the lending decisions of banks and help them in uh, segmenting customers into various classes or borrowing right. profile but a more important use case is also that for particularly for emerging economies and uh, countries like africa it can help in boosting financial inclusion 
Yeah. Because, uh, uh, for example, people who are credit excluded, they may not have a credit score, which mm. is used to, you know, make decisions on whether the banks will lend to you or not. But again, you do not have a credit score, you do not have a transaction history, but there are other information that can be used to generate an assessment about whether to lend or not, right. to get a sense about the ability to pay. So again, it helps in uh, bringing more people into the formal financial safety uh, net uh, because you are looking at a, a larger information set and not just a, a smaller information set. So, uh, for example, standard setting bodies like IMF and World Bank have been advocating the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning for financial inclusion because that mm. is a very important promising role of AI in the field of finance that it can help in boosting financial inclusion. Also, another way it can help in boosting financial inclusion is that it can help in, you know, uh, making tailored products for financially excluded right. uh, people. So that is what the fintech have an edge over currently in, yeah, because uh, in India. Because they are much more flexible. They are much more flexible. They have uh, remote access. So they can help in designing products that are more uh, suited for financially excluded uh, products and then yeah. help them bringing in, uh, in the uh, financial safety, formal financial uh, sector. So those are very important uh, use cases of uh, AI in the field of uh, uh, for banking sector that is you know uh, 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 credit scoring and uh, boosting financial inclusion but it also for uh, banks also it helps them in uh, automating financial compliance you know because once mm -hmm. you know what is the regulatory compliance and uh, you have access to AI it helps in automating reports you know whatever right. submissions need to be made uh, to promote regulatory compliance AI help in easing that and it helps in uh, uh, improving uh, compliance and uh, helps in uh, you know reducing the possibility of misconduct and therefore uh, penalties and so on yeah right and uh... Even on the credit score side, the, just as you are more accurately able to uh, gauge the credit worthiness of a potential customer, your AI is also helping you to prevent frauds where right. people deliberately trying to fool you into giving them a loan. Yeah. AI can then prevent that as yeah. well. So both both uh, sides are there. So uh, banks are using AI for credit scoring, financial inclusion, even for boosting their own investment uh, strategies, you know, uh, looking at various data, looking at the return, whether to invest in government securities, whether to invest in uh, corporate bonds. So banks are using artificial intelligence to uh, predict returns and right. uh, you know uh, improve their uh, investment strategies and improve mm -hmm. their return and also to uh, prevent uh, you know uh, fraud transactions and also automating uh, regulatory compliance so these are some of the broad areas where banks are using artificial intelligence and uh, you know just day before yesterday when rbi released its uh, bulletin the uh, october bulletin it has a interesting paper on ai in uh, indian banks and uh, mm. what uh, the authors of the paper have done is that uh, again they have used AI uh, for example they have used word clouds to find right. out from the annual reports of banks how many times the use of the word AI occurs or machine learning occurs so that they can get a sense of you know what is the pace of adoption of AI by private sector banks and public sector banks right. so uh, it is seen that uh, the pace of adoption has accelerated uh, for uh, uh, banks, particularly private sector banks, it's become sixfold from 2015 to 2024. So that's a very encouraging trend that banks are increasingly using AI uh, for their various activities. Right, no, and it's also very good to see that they're using them in these concrete ways because as I mentioned, I mean, AI has also become a buzzword where every single person trying to sell you something is now saying that it has AI. You'll suddenly find during Diwali, they'll say this is AI Mithai mm -hmm. also. Like, you know, it's, it's just everywhere. But now with this increasing adoption, I mean, surely there are also some risks to, you know, just widespread adoption of AI, especially in sectors as sensitive as the financial sector. Right. So there are uh, risks, firstly, and there are various sources of uh, uh, risk, especially as you mentioned, financial sector, first stemming from the data, because data here is very crucial. Absolutely. So yeah. if your input is uh, good, if your data is good, then it will generate high quality output. On the other hand, if the data is biased, 
then the output will also be biased and if the output is biased in finance in serious terms it means that it can actually amplify financial shocks okay. it can amplify financial stability uh, risks a very uh, you know interesting example uh, uh, not uh, particularly in the field of finance but just to highlight you know how important is data here is uh, in uh, 2018 amazon uh, had developed uh, a recruitment tool an ai powered recruitment tool mm -hmm. to scan through various uh, resumes to you know recruit people for their e-commerce platform right. and what they were uh, seeing was that it is only picking up male candidates so then they identified why it is happening so it was happening because the 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 software was trained in a way that it was looking at the recruitment of the past 10 years and the recruitment of the past 10 years were mainly male now I situation see. has changed but now any in any resume when it was saying you know uh, female candidate or uh, women captain of a football team or so such uh, applications were rejected just because in the past in mostly the, past, the hiring was yes made. because you know the data is also trained there is very important term that here is that the found the data is also trained to identify trends and if the data is trained to identify the AI, historical the AI yeah, is trained. Yeah, the, yeah the 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 data is trained to mm -hmm. identify historical trend and if the algorithm is such that it is picking up your you know past historical trends and it based on that yeah. it is uh, you know making decisions uh, then it becomes a problem and then they had to uh, shelf that recruitment tool so okay. that it becomes more general neutral uh, gender neutral and then also they were not sure whether it's going to pick up so uh, you know the female candidates so those are some examples of how the uh, data quality of data is very important and if there is an inherent bias in the data or inherent bias in the uh, algorithm then it can generate faulty outputs and can generate undesirable output which can create mistrust in the technology and therefore uh, it can lower the use of uh, that technology so that is on the data part but more importantly what is happening in finance uh, particularly the uh, disadvantages that it can uh, lead to herd behavior and uh, we have seen that whenever there is herd behavior, for example, if uh, a lot of uh, uh, financial market participants are using the same kind of software right. uh, for, say, uh, robo advisory or for, say, investment advisory or for, say, credit scoring, then it will generate similar kinds of output. So whenever mm. you have similar kinds of output and when there is kind of herd behavior, it has its own problem because if there is a risk in one output, it will have risk in the yeah, other. So there is a correlated mm. risk. So whenever there is herd behavior, it is problematic regardless of whether it is artificial intelligence or not. But AI can actually... Uh, you know, uh, accentuate this problem of herd behavior and therefore amplify uh, financial shocks. That is another manifestation. And third most important is that it can actually become more pro-cyclical. You know, in fin a financial sector, uh, uh, for example, bank lending is pro-cyclical in the right. sense that in good times, you are lending more. Yeah. In bad times, you are lending less. So even your risk weights are such that risk weights are lower in good times and uh, they They're are higher, higher in, in bad times. Yeah. So which is pro-cyclical. It's going according to the cycle. Actually, it should be counter-cyclical that you know, yeah. prevent the buildup of credit during good times so that you can uh, encourage more lending during uh, bad times. And in bad time is when most people need credit. Need credit. So yeah. you have to encourage credit during bad times. So, but the credit weights are so designed that they are pro-cyclical that means they are credit weights are lower in good times and higher in bad time and these credit weights are a very important input in your uh, uh, data for uh, you know for credit decisions yeah so it will if you are using these kind of models it will accentuate the problem of credit you will give more credit and it will lead to credit boom in good time and if all mm -hmm. the banks and all the financial sector players are using the same kind of uh, uh, technology same kind of uh, softwares then it will uh, increase pro cyclicality and amplify financial shocks right financial shocks may not be that much in the absence of ai but AI is actually amplifying financial shocks. It, it could happen, yeah, right. So now, okay, we have a question from Karthik uh, from, our, from the audience. He says, uh, I mean, we've been talking about how AI has been reducing frauds, yeah. but he asks, can AI lead to more frauds and how can we save ourselves? For example, he says, I get at least two calls a day from fraudsters pretending to be calling from the bank 
regarding my account activity and this is true i mean i i'm sure everybody, everybody has uh, yeah. stories of getting these fraud calls and a lot of them are they they are these uh, you know uh, a machine voice that right. is just speaking to you it's an ai voice correct so it can you know the thing that we are talking about about uh, you know mule account so rbi one uh, uh, way in which ai can prevent fraud is by having these kind of software that is able to identify uh, you know anomalous transactions and uh, mule accounts so right. that is one the other is also to uh, you know not an ai based solution but we have now these uh, fraud registries where one can mm. report for example the rbi has this fraud registry where one can report these instances of uh, fraud but most importantly one has to be aware of deep fakes so that is one yeah. thing that uh, is very uh, uh, critical and that is where there is a question about what should be the structure of regulation and globally you know while the benefits are uh, understood and benefits are plentiful there is there are uh, various concerns and many countries are trying to uh, address these concerns through various levels of policy intervention mm. for example european union has already come up with an ai act already so they have an ai act which is a risk based approach you know there are some activities which are completely prohibited for no, example you can't use ai at all there. at all for those for example right. you are using ai for social scoring hmm. that is completely prohibited ai in finance is also considered an as high risk and therefore it has to be regulated hmm. and then there are ai for other activities which may not be that risky and therefore there is a light touch regulation so there are various uh, scales of uh, regulation uh, for in india we do not have a very complex comprehensive structure of regulation as of now and that is where we do have a uh, you know national strategy for artificial intelligence right. which lays down certain principles for uh, you know balancing innovation and safety but it has not been translated into proper enforcements SEBI has a reporting framework for uh, AI where mm. you know the financial market infrastructure institutions have to report AI and ML activities whatever they may be using but for deep fakes and all for example METI has just issued advisory yeah yeah beyond that we do not have and that is where the critique lies that you know now is the time to come up with uh, proper safeguards and regulation and what other countries are doing in this you know the first step has to be explanatory assessments you come up with more number of explainers on what is ai how ai is beneficial how ai can harm from from an organization standpoint from a company standpoint from an individual standpoint so what other regulators are doing is are issuing more uh, you know explanatory notes on the role of ai right. it is very important to understand because it's the the scale of risk is uh, quite high it's, it's the scale of complexity is quite high and there are various manifestations you have machine learning then you have deep learning and you know deep learning is good because it is using a more uh, complex algorithm to you know analyze complex data which may not be linear yeah. data but non linear data but again if it is that is used for generating fake images and so on which is deep fake and mm -hmm. uh, biggest source of fraud then there has to be some regulations towards that so regulations need to uh, catch up with the pace of innovation of course and that's that seems to be uh, a long story in india as well right. in general technology keeps going much faster than regulations can keep up and we keep needing to update our laws and that process will will continue of course so there you go that's uh, what we have for you this is ai in the financial sector what the opportunities are there are several and they are actually some of them are very powerful and very good in terms of improving financial inclusion something that india needs uh, the other is in helping institutions score their potential borrowers much better find out their credit worthiness in a much more accurate well rounded way prevent some frauds as well so all of these things are very good in terms of financial stability but on the bad side over reliance on ai and just blindly applying it could lead to some problems such as you know the data that you're feeding it if that is already biased then ai is going to reinforce those biases and the outcomes you will get will be even more biased than before and similarly things like pro cyclicality like when uh, as radhika was explaining in good times you ideally want to lower the amount of credit that you are giving so that in bad times you can give more credit to people who need it but 
if the AI kind of picks up on the trend that in good times people are more credit worthy and so let's give them more credit right then that's going to keep getting reinforced and so you'll have an outcome that is not the best i mean you don't want a situation where in bad times ai is saying no don't give people credit so there are some problems there as well so you need to regulate and of course there's the issue of ai generated fraud and deep fakes and all of that that requires a lot of thought from the policy makers it might also need some technology technology interventions in itself maybe ai fighting ai because you need ai to catch deep fakes as well but all of this is an evolving field in india and in the world but i mean of course we are concerned in india uh, about india so all of this is happening it's all very exciting but there are some things to be concerned about but on that note that's all from us thank you so much for watching